beautiful creatures of the world and welcome back to coffee with carrie lynn it's a beautiful day in the far north of maine up along the canadian border in the crown of maine and i hope it's a beautiful day wherever you are as well for those of you who are just joining us on spotify iHeartRadio, amazon music and youtube music we had to do the introduction twice because the audio did not start it is one of those days ladies and gentlemen beautiful creatures of the world where anything that's going to go wrong goes wrong it's just a murphy's law day here on the homestead i don't know i've been up till all hours of the night tomorrow is the new moon and we're just kind of the energy is wild the animals are wild the weather is wild we're gonna be hitting up into the 40s this weekend here in the far north of Maine, up along the Canadian border. And that is going to be glorious. It sure is. We are going to get some extra snowshoeing done over the weekend, hopefully. How has everybody been? I hope you guys are doing well. Please think about liking and sharing my videos on YouTube and on Rumble. Please subscribe to my channels. And again, if you are on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, or YouTube Music, please Follow my podcast and give me a five-star rating. It costs you guys nothing to give me a thumbs up or a five-star rating, and it does boost the videos up in the algorithm and lets everybody know, the algorithm know, that people actually do like my channel and want to watch it. We have, uh, we've had controversy on the channel. Yes, we have, ladies and gentlemen. Those are my rabbits. They're in their rabbit room doing their rabbit thing. And dogs. We live on a working homestead. There's people coming, there's people going, there's animals, there's all kinds of things going on on the homestead. So if you will excuse me for just one moment, I will go find out what is going on everywhere. that calamity has been resolved <laughs> ladies and gentlemen what happens when you have livestock and a moon phase the moon is going to be a new moon it's going into a different phase it is a thing when the moon energy changes people and animals go weird it just it's just a thing animals can feel the energy they can feel the cycle in nature. They can feel the rhythm of nature changing, and therefore they do a lot of squirrely things. So if you have a homestead and you own livestock, you all know what I'm talking about. And we're all going through it, aren't we? Yes, we are. I want to talk to you guys today about farming. Now, I saw a video um, where John Kerry has said that farming is a very large contributor to climate change and we need to roll farming back about 30 percent and do you know what that's going to do to people we are going to see starvation like you have never seen before ladies and gentlemen beautiful creatures of the world there is a new thing happening and it is with the farmers in this country they are being told in many many ways they are being told that they need to produce less we have just a few places that process our meat in the entire country and what's happening to the ranchers now is they are getting such low ball prices on their meat that it is very difficult to bring their meat to market um, it's an absolute loss what they're trying to do at this point is through economic adversity put the people who produce the food that goes on your table on your plate in your mouth in the mouths of your children out of business the one thing that is stopping this from happening if you speak to farmers and ranchers they will all tell you there is one thing at this point that is stopping the farming industry from completely being destroyed like it is over in Europe. You see what's going on in Germany with those farmers? See what went on in France? Just look at what's going on across the globe, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world. When you talk to farmers in the ag country and you talk to ranchers in the breadbasket, 
of our country, they are telling you the same thing over and over and over again. The only reason why they're not going out of business is because in our country, we have a little thing called property rights. Otherwise, there'd be a big thing called they got to do what other people tell them to do. But they own their property. And they can do what they want on their property. And that is that. Living in Maine, we have an extra um, added safeguard. It is not a 100% foolproof safety. But now that you see what's going on in the world with the farming community, what's going on in our own country with the farming community, Maine was the first state to add to our constitution the right to food. We in Maine have the right to grow food, whether it's a victory garden, which of course John Kerry says that your little victory garden is putting off more emissions than Big Agra. Okay. Whether it's growing your victory garden or having livestock on your property, you are allowed in the state of Maine to actually grow your own food. You can't sell it. You can't give it away. But you can grow your own food within the borders of your property. And um, as we have seen recently, um, states' rights are superseding your federal constitutional rights. Such as within Maine, we voted yes on two, which was the pot bill. Yes, the Mary Joanna. We voted yes on two, and we have the right to recreate. Federally, it's still not a thing you can do. So it's seeming that the more that these things happen, the more these laws come into play in your state and the federal government does nothing about it. It's creating a precedence for states' rights, such as in, in 2020, 2021, the, the shutdowns and all that. It was left to the states. All these little things are creating precedence um, for states' rights to be above all other um, authority. And that is a good thing in the state of Maine because we in the state of Maine now have the constitutional right to food. We have the right to grow our own food and we do have the right to farm on our own land, providing you're following your town ordinances. And that's just, that's the caveat in there, which is perfectly fine because the people downtown running your town, running your little city, they don't want to be hungry either. So they're not going to care. And we live in, in ag country, so it's not like they can say too much to us up here, up along the Canadian border, about um, a victory garden or, or, or gardening or having small livestock or having big livestock, provided you have the acreage and you are within the specs, you know. So everybody needs to be aware of what is going on um, in this country and what is going on especially with the farmers. Because if you take 30% of what is being grown at the moment and cut it off, ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures in the world, we live a very privileged life here in the United States of America. We do. We do not know. We are of a generation. The boomers, my parents, Xers, me, millennials, my children, my grandbabies that are just being born. We live in excess. Our whole lives have been in excess. We are not the generation that lived through World War I. We are not the generation that lived through the Great Depression. We are not the generation that lived through World War II. We are not generations that have had to give up for the country. We, ha we have given nothing up. We have not ever really gone without um, People will be like, oh, well, I, you know, there were times where I didn't really have a paycheck, so I didn't eat, and I let my kids eat, and I've gone without. No, you haven't. Not really. You haven't gone without, like, my grandparents went without during the Depression. They went without. Like, it didn't exist. They couldn't have it. They were rationed, and when that little bit was gone, it was gone until the next set of ration tickets came out. 
We do not know what hunger is. We do not know what malnutrition is. My grandmother, true story. My grandmother, during the Depression, milk was scarce. The milk was given to the children as much as could be. And her teeth stopped growing during the Depression and throughout World War II. At the end of World War II, things started coming back a little bit more. She got to drink more milk and her teeth, she was like 16 or 17. Her teeth looked like baby teeth. Her teeth started growing again. On her natural front teeth, she had a line where you could literally see the depression years. That's when her teeth stopped growing. And then as things moved along, the war moved along, the war was winding down, Things were being gotten again within the household. Her teeth started growing again. We have not known this. My mother, my father, me, my children, my grandchildren, you have never known what true adversity is. You have never known what true hardship is. We have never known what it's like to not have food. And this is what's being geared up. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, we are going to be doing several series on gardening here. If you have any tips for gardening, please leave them in the comments if you want to share. We are going to work on our seeds coming up very shortly, and we are going to work on our garden, and we're going to do it with you guys. We are going to show you the things we do. We are going to show you how we build our soil without chemicals. We are completely organic here. We build our own soil. Um, we make our own compost and we utilize it. We save, 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 seed, save, save that 10 times fast. We seed, save, and we are going to um, show you at the end of all this throughout the spring, summer, and fall how to get your garden from start to to finish how we do it here on the homestead some of the methods we use may not be conducive to your situation and you will have to figure things out now bear in mind when you do not use fertilizers when you do not use chemicals to grow your food you have a big failure rate so um that is something if you're thinking about going completely organic and following us through it uh there are years that we have a great bounty and there are years that are just absolute shite and we will starve to death but we just don't want to bastardize our soil with chemicals because there will be a time as we saw over the last few years with the big ag in our area the big industry that um fertilizer is a rough racket it is very expensive and um they're struggling Farmers everywhere in the country are struggling and their adversity will become your problem. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for you to participate in our five can challenge and do it with your whole heart and do it with a lot of enthusiasm. I'll be taking you guys on a shopping spree soon and showing you who uh, have complained that they cannot afford their five extra cans. I will show you how to take the shit out of your cart, put it back on the shelf and get you some nutritious food in your cart. Five cans. That's all we're doing. We're just giving up a couple bags of potato chips, maybe a couple coffees a week at the D&D, &D, Tim Hortons, wherever you get your coffee, Starbucks. And we're going to replace those items with nutritious food that your family eats. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, keep an eye on the world. Keep an eye on the farmers in Germany. Keep an eye on the farmers in France. See what they're doing. Go out, expand your mind, explore. Google it. Look it up on YouTube. There are videos all over the place. You know, sometimes you just, uh, legacy media just ain't with the program sometimes and you got to have a little alternative in your life. Ladies and gentlemen, beautiful creatures of the world, thank you for listening to my rant today. Carpe diem, because no one promised you a tomorrow.